everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is doing okay. Uh, the weather's kind of nasty here in Houston. Temperatures dropped. Still not freezing yet, but uh, it's Houston. So uh, got a bunch of people out that don't know how to drive in inclement weather. Definitely not cold in inclement weather. So it's a little sketchy being out. But I have a few errands that I want to run. Um, there's a lot going on and I want people to really pay attention and not be distracted. There are a couple of things that I want to point out and not going to be long at all. I constantly research, I constantly read, I constantly verify what I read. Uh, it's just the researcher in me is something that I've actually been doing long before I did it formally. It's just how I'm built. Um, first things first, uh, I don't know if you heard, but the CDC's got this new recommendation uh, to double up on the mask. They don't want you to just wear one mask now. They want you to wear two. Supposedly, there's this, uh, st this uh, study out that shows that uh, wearing two masks substantially re uh, reduces the risk of contracting it. And now, you know, so there's a new study out that says double up. Um, and, you know, one of the people who has pushed the whole masking thing is the guy who is supposed to be the foremost expert who's been working for the United States government uh, for some time. Uh, and that's Dr. Anthony Fauci. And the one thing that I've noticed about Anthony Fauci, which is interesting, and most people, are, you know, quickly label me a conspiracy theorist because I don't accept anything at face value. I've seen enough of what this country does to know better than that. I'm not talking about things that you can uh, postulate or, uh, you know, guess or presume. I'm talking about things that's already been verified that they've done. Uh, and a lot of it has been aimed at minorities, specifically blacks and the impoverished. So you have to be very cognizant of what goes on so that you can be totally clear about what you're facing and what you're dealing with. So I pay a lot of attention to things that most people don't. In every public appearance uh, that I've seen with Anthony Fauci, outside of when he's in front of the cameras for a press release, I've seen him in the presence of other people at baseball games and some other places where he wasn't the center of attraction. He just happened to be there. And he'll have a mask, but it's not on properly. It's below his chin. And the people around him have their mask on, but almost every time he does it. And so I keep reading and then I go back and I found something back when the H1N1 virus was out, the swine flu virus was out uh, back in 2009. And 61 million people contracted it. Um, and a number died from it. Uh, Dr. Fauci went on record and said, in saying that it wasn't the virus that was killing the people, it was the concentrated level of bacteria and the way that the bacteria were, were, was getting into their system was through the mask they were wearing. Okay, so that's one thing. Here's the second thing. Think about anyone who wears masks for a living, especially in an uh, sanitized environment. Let's, so let's go with medical, which directly correlates what we're talking about here. When you see doctors and nurses and surgeons putting on surgical masks and, and, and those masks when they go in and see a patient or they're performing a procedure on a patient, long before there was a COVID-19 or a coronavirus epidemic or pandemic, and definitely after, when they finish with that particular patient, they discard the mask. When they finish their surgery, they discard the mask. When they, they don't wear the same mask all day long and they definitely don't wear the same mask every day. So wearing a mask on top of a, some other issues that you have to deal with oxygen restriction and how that impacts you on a number of levels. Do your own research read. I'm not gonna even get into that today. But the idea of wearing the same mask over and over, which most people are doing, has some detriment. Now they're asking you to double up. Doubling up on a mask, if you haven't wore these masks and actually tried to be active, you don't understand what I'm talking about. But try doubling up, which is going to restrict the airflow 
thereby restricting oxygen. This is elementary type stuff, but restricting oxygen, what are you actually doing long term? Now, there's a lot of studies out there that talk about it, not going to even get into it. I'm telling you to check it out. On another note, something that is as equally pernicious and subtly being pushed, while everybody's focusing on the quote unquote impeachment trial of a president that's no longer in office for the sake of saying, okay, we're going to stop him from running for office uh, for another term somewhere in the future. Uh, while that's going on, there's a simultaneous bill that, um, excuse me, there's a bill that is simultaneously floating through the House, uh, House Bill 127, authored and sponsored by Houston uh, Congressman Congresswoman Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. Anybody knows me knows how I feel about Sheila Jackson Lee. Okay, I'm not about uh, black faces in high places. I'm not about symbolic or uh, anything. I'm not big on symbolism. I'm big on what are you doing? I followed her long enough to know and see. I see the mouth service. I see very little done. I see the suffering continue. I see a uh, career politician with very little to show for it outside of symbolism. Well, Sheila Jackson Lee has authored a bill, House Bill 127, 127, that could easily turn a lot of blacks and other poor people within this country into felons in a very, very short period of time. The bill is about limitations and monitoring and registering firearms. You need to research it, you need to read it because they're talking about a national registry. Uh, they're talking about uh, making guns that are already in the possession of people illegal. Uh, anything with a clip capacity over, I think, eight or under 10. Uh, anything uh, over 10 is automatically gonna be illegal. So if you possess it, you gotta turn it in. Uh, and there are a number of other things that, and but the problem is, Number one is the cost of registering for the national database. Now, the thing is, any gun that was bought legally is already registered under the owner who bought it. Okay, so we have to understand that. When you buy a gun legally, you have to get a background check. When you have the background check and you, and the, and you purchase the weapon, uh, uh, tobacco, firearms, and whatever, you know the one I'm talking about. That agency is aware of the purchase and who it goes to. So it's already registered. It's already a national database. But the average person wouldn't know that. But here's the thing. You've got to pay for the registration. You've got to pay for uh, this ongoing type process. There are a number of different things in this bill that you have to pay for in order to stay remain qualified as a gun owner. Now, the chances of this bill actually getting through is slim to none because I think it's constitutionally, uh, it's a violation of constitutional rights on a number of different levels. But the idea that they're doing it, and here's another Democrat who is putting blacks in the crosshairs because the people who are going to suffer the most are the, those who can afford to do it and those who will probably just simply not, not follow through. Well, not having these guns registered is a felony. So you either got to turn your guns in, either get them properly registered or become a felon without ever even being notified. The next thing you know, you're being picked up or there's a warrant. I don't know how that part is going to be carried out. But the idea is it's being pushed real quietly through. Now, the fact that I believe personally that it's unconstitutional, I believe that even if it were to pass, I don't believe that it will get past the... the, the, the uh, the constitutional challenge that will be made by lobbyists like the NRA and some black uh, firearms groups along with a number of Republicans. So I don't think that it will actually get that far of actually becoming a law, but you still need to be aware of what's going on and who's doing it. And the th all the things that are going on in the black community, this is what you choose to do. Now, yes, I'm pro-gun. I'm not pro anybody getting killed, but what I can tell you is 
there's tons of research I've done it. I wanted to know, okay, really, how much do, do gun restricted uh, laws that restrict gun uh, ownership? How effective are they in stopping violent crime? What I can tell you is that not very much. Here, here here's a simple synopsis of why gun laws keyword law is focused on governing law abiding system uh, citizens the truth of the nature is anyone who is willing to break the law is not going to be impacted by it because if I want to get a gun you got to understand gun trafficking is the number one business globally before, second is human trafficking. So before drug trafficking, you have gun trafficking, weapons trafficking, and then, I mean, weapons trafficking, gun trafficking, all in one. Then you have uh, human trafficking, then you have drugs. Those are your top industries, money makers, revenue generators in the world. Do you think if I want a gun, I can't get one illegally? If I'm planning on doing something illegal, do you think that's going to be a problem for me? Absolutely, absolutely not. I'm going to get a gun. Anybody that's wanting to do something illegal, who has made up their mind to do something illegal, isn't going to be hindered by legality. And there's always going to be a way. You talk about the war on drugs for the last 40 years, and yet there's no shortage of drugs. You cannot stop a force that actually is being funded by its illegality. The fact that certain guns are illegal and you can't get your hands on them makes them profitable. And anybody who wants to make a profit doing it is going to start moving them. All you're going to do is open up an entirely new industry where people are going to start getting guns. Now you're going to have people labeled as felons who really truly aren't felons, but because they refuse not to be armed, they're going to be considered felons. It's real simple. If you want uh, violent crime to uh, decline, start dealing with poverty. On that note, I've got to get out of here, you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about this some more, uh, but I got to get out of here now. You take care.